Hey guys, welcome to My so Bliss. Today I'm super excited to be partnering up with Baby Lock Sewing Machines and bringing you another sewing tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these super cute drawstring bags, just like this one here. They're super quick, super easy, great for storage, for games, for all the things. Gifts, gift bags would be a great option for these. So um, I really like doing them in like a canvas fabric or you could do a cotton fabric, a linen fabric, so many great options. Um, and it's going to be super fun. So I'm going to be using my baby lock brilliant, which is this machine right here. This is the perfect everyday sewing machine has so many great features. I'm going to show you a few of them today in this video. I'll put links down below for it. So make sure it to go and check that out. And then the supplies that you're going to need for this project are, like I said, the fabric, you can choose any kind of woven fabric, a cotton, a linen, a canvas. Um, canvas is really nice for like a heavier duty kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, whatever kind you like. And then some ribbon or twine, something for your drawstrings. I just used ribbon on both of mine. And then I used just a tiny bit of interfacing because I use a buttonhole for the openings right here. So that just cleans it up and keeps it looking really nice. Um, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So other than that, you're just gonna need your basic sewing supplies. So let's get started. One of the really great things about this bag is that you can make it in all different sizes. So you're just going to cut out two pieces of whatever size you want. So my pieces are about 12 inches by 11 inches, but you can make them bigger. You can make them smaller. Again, like I said, whatever you want. And then we're going to iron the top edge down. I'm just going to iron it down first a quarter of an inch along that top and then an inch down again. So that'll hold in those raw edges and cover those up. And then I'm going to measure in one inch from either side of one of my pieces. And I'm going to put a piece of interfacing there and iron that in place. And I'm just doing that on one piece of my fabric. Um, you don't need to do it on both, but this is going to make it so it's better for our buttonholes that we put in later. So then I'm just going to iron my other piece a quarter of an inch and then an inch from the top. And now I'm gonna mark, I just marked these with pins. Um, it definitely would be better if you had a marking pencil or a marking tool um, or something that'll wash out. And I just marked an inch in from that edge. So now I'm gonna go over to my machine and get my buttonhole foot ready. I really like how this machine has this buttonhole part where this back part, you would put the button in that you are wanting to fit to it. But right now I'm just gonna size it to what size I want my opening to be. And then I'm just gonna put it on my machine. I do like to lower my presser foot to make it connect. And then just make sure you put that lever down on that left side, that's really important. And then I just choose what buttonhole I want. There are multiple ones on this machine. Um, I really like the options that it gives. This one's just really simple. And it starts from the bottom of the buttonhole. So then I'll put my fabric underneath and hold my threads in place so I don't get any like bunching or nesting at that bottom, the beginning. And then I just push my foot pedal down and let it go. I don't have to do anything. It just goes until it's done. And like I said earlier, it's going to fit to that size that I have that back part adjusted to. Um, so make sure you do it whatever size you want. And then once it slows down like this and stops right here, I can cut my threads and that buttonhole is finished. It's so quick, so easy. Look how nice that looks. There's the front side. And yeah, I just love it. Now I can trim those threads from our buttonholes and open up the buttonholes. I could use a buttonhole opener. I was just too lazy and didn't want to go find mine. So I just use scissors. Just make sure you don't cut through the end of the buttonhole because then it would make it pointless. <laughs> so once those are cut open and looking nice, all cleaned up, I'm then going to get um, my pieces and put them wrong sides together. I'm going to do this a little differently than normal so that we don't have any raw edges in the end. So I'm putting them wrong sides together so we can make a French seam. Now I'm going to take it over to my machine and sew about half of an inch from the edge 
all the way around, except for that top edge. Sorry, when I say all the way around, I just mean the three sides, not that top edge, because we want to leave that open for the bag. And I did unfold that ironed spot that we did. So you can see my iron lines, but they're unfolded and sewn. So now I'm going to trim that seam allowance down to about an eighth to a quarter inch. Um, I'm just going to trim it on all three sides. And then once that's trimmed, I can turn it right sides out. Make sure to really poke out those corners. Make sure your edges are looking really nice. And then I like to take it over to my iron and really press this in place. Make sure those seams, everything's pushed out and the seams are lining up. Um, that seam that we sewed should be like right on the edge. So you can see right here how it is right. It's the crease. So it's right there all the way around. It's perfect. It's ready to go. You could pin it. I usually don't at this point, but then I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and on the wrong side, I'm going to sew at about a quarter of an inch to half of an inch. You just want to make sure you're covering those raw edges and making that encasing. After it's sewn, we're going to turn it right sides out and again, make sure those corners are pushed out as far as possible. And you can iron this in place. I don't really iron the top edge because I don't want to mess with the ironing marks I had because we're about to use them. But just a good ironing will make it look really nice. And then I'm going to fold those ironed lines over again. If you need to, iron them again. So I did a quarter of an inch and then another inch down. Um, iron that in place because it just, it just got a little wonky. But... Hopefully yours did it. And then I'm just going to pin it in place all the way around. So a quarter of an inch, an inch, and then pin in place. So that way it's ready and we can go take it over to our sewing machine and stitch um, this edge down. A great thing about the Baby Lock Brilliant is you can pull this part out so then you have a smaller um, arm edge right here. And then I can just sew in the round and circle around it perfectly, especially if you're making a smaller size bag. This is really nice. So then I'm just going to stitch along that edge. So I'm stitching at about an inch is where this should be. Um, stitching that casing down, back stitching at the beginning and the end. And one thing that I do, you don't have to do this, is then I also do another line of stitching a quarter, well, no, an eighth of an inch in from the edge. And this just gives it a little more professional look, a clean look, makes that edge really nice. And once that's sewn, now we're going to put our ribbon in. You can use any kind of ribbon or twine or whatever you would like for your drawstrings. And I'm just going to make it double the width of my bag and then a little longer. So about three inches on each side and you need two of those. And then I just take a safety pin and put it through the ribbon and then put the ribbon through one hole. You go in one hole and out that same hole. So all the way around the bag with one piece of ribbon and I got a little stuck here with my safety pin, so it took me a second. But then once you pull it out, you can tie those ends together if you like, or you can tie them separately. That's more about preference, um, but I like to tie them together so it doesn't accidentally go back in the bag. And then I'm going to do the other side. So you go in through that hole and around the whole bag, skipping over that other side of the bag, the other hole, and going back to the original starting point. So all the way around and pulled out, tie those ends together. I do trim it. You can also um, melt the edges of that ribbon a little bit is helpful so it doesn't fray. And then once you are done tying off your ribbons, you could either tie them together or separately. I like tying them together because then if you pull too far, it's not gonna go back into the bag and then you're gonna have to go fish it out and re-thread it through. But if you like the look of it, definitely go for that. So once you're done with that, you are all done with your drawstring bag. I hope you guys enjoyed, enjoyed this tutorial. I really like that on the inside, our seams are clean. You don't have any raw edges and it just looks really, really nice. One thing you can do if it bothers you is on the buttonholes, you could add a little bit of fray check and that just keeps all these threads from fraying or from looking kind of wonky or <laughs> any of that, it'll just clean that up just a little bit more. You could even add a little bit of glue unless you wash the bag and then it'll probably wash out. So 
Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe so you will know when there are new sewing tutorials. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!